Good day, my friends. I thought this would have been a good day for me as well if it wasn't for this hellish sound waking me up at 9 in the morning because, of course, what better time to come and cut the grass outside of my house than at 9 in the morning, obviously. Now, today we are going to be looking at the scraps of 9.1. We are going to be looking at the things left behind after we have gone over the more important stuff, you know, things like balance changes, balance tuning, talents, spells, legendaries, soul binds and whatnot, and then the collection of mounts, some other more important news, and now we are left with some of the minor ones from the changes to your anima gains over time with Renown, to the possible changes related to Torghast uh, score system, as well as the Solash and the cost for upgrading your legendary in 9.1. Let's start with the tiniest one, which is going to be the increase to your anima gains with Renown in patch 9.1. Now, we have already seen Blizzard's attempt, slow attempt, at increasing your anima gains. This has started months ago, where they increased the amount of anima you could get from Mythic Plus, for example, from raids, and then they increased it even more. The last time they also mentioned they were going to add achievements based on the level of your Covenant buildings further increasing your world quest and mythic plus and raid boss anima gains and then there is going to be an additional one in 9.1 of course in the ptr in 9.1 you can see all of your renown levels you can see all of the rewards of your renown levels going from 41 all the way up to 80 which is going to be the next cap of renown so the expansion started at 1 going all the way to 40 and then in 9.1 it will be from 41 to 80 and because of this, because of these rewards being visible, of course, we can see that at level 42 and at level 58 is when you're going to get a increase in World Quest Anima rewards. Now, this would be interesting and exciting if, number one, people still cared about World Quests. You know, one of the important things, one of the cool things that we should congratulate Blizzard for is the fact that they removed Artifact Power Farming, Azerite Power Farming, so... You no longer need to obsessively clear the entire map worth of world quest, which is great. It saves you a lot of time. You can now do the things you enjoy, rather than logging in every day knowing that you have a list of five, six, seven, eight world quests you have to complete for your magic power you need to collect. The downside of this system is that now you have completely devalued world quests. So any sort of cosmetic, any sort of cool things, maybe a transmog, maybe a pet, a toy, amount is going to be tied behind a system that doesn't really compel you to complete. Because before, you were doing this system because you wanted player power. You were doing this system because you wanted to upgrade the level of your weapon, artifact weapon, the level of your necklace, to be able to use different rings of Azerite armor. And along the way, before you were getting it for your power, you were also getting toys, mounts, and pets, and whatnot. So they were the side effect, the collateral effect of gaining this collectible power. Now, in Shadowlands, this power isn't there. So you only do world quests if you want this side thing, you know, this extra thing. And many people just said, fuck it, I don't care, you know. I was going to do this if you actually gave me some, some sockets, some item level increase on my gear, you know, maybe even some special potions or special flasks to use for my content, but if it's just cosmetics, I don't care. I don't want to do world quests, man. I've done them for four years. Now that they don't have power attached to it, I ain't going to do them again. That seems to be the general feeling of most people when it comes to world quests in this expansion. So yes, there is going to be another, yet another anima reward increase, but I don't think it's going to change much. It is just a fundamentally unrewarding system, so people are not going to get lured just because you increase the anima rewards. Now, on to the second point, which is going to be the Torghast rework. Now, this point was a point jump-started by Eon during one of the many interviews that the Blizzard developers released for BlizzCon. They gave out interviews, press releases to several news sites. One of those interviews was about Torghast. The initial answer from Eon related to Torghast was we would like to revisit the success and failure in Torghast in Chains of Domination in 9.1. On top of, of course, the death score being removed, because, spoiler, in 9.1 you are going to defeat the Tara group, which means there is no longer a big bad monster chasing you if you die too many times, and his foreshadowing for 9.1 from all the way back to two months ago was what if instead we had more of a rating or a score where it was more of a spectrum, a continuum of success and trying to do better, trying to be more efficient, trying to be faster or have fewer deaths, but you have some reward to show for it. 
You always want to do better, but you're never leaving empty-handed unless you, like, fail on the first floor and your run ends there, and that's okay. Because, of course, if you die on the first floor, my man, please uninstall. This, he didn't say that, but I'm pretty sure he thought it. Now, I touched on this jokingly the first time this was put out, mentioning what are you gonna do? Make a Raider IO scoring system for Torghast or something like that? Well, not exactly. But there is going to be, or at least it seems like, that there is going to be a scoring system. Now, for the moment, Torghast is closed on the PTR. It's not up for testing, so we don't exactly know for sure. Eventually, when they are done tuning this thing, they will open it for people to test, but for now, all that could be seen were the data mine spells. In this case, data mine buffs, more or less. Things like, for example, Elite Slayer. Elites award 10% additional score, and then 20% additional score, and then 30% additional score. Things like Moratorium. When the multiplier timer is below 5 seconds, a score orb will summon nearby, claiming it will reset the timer and award 50 score. You know, this is all completely unheard of. In Torghast, it's obviously clearly hinting at a scoring system, you know, score streak mastery. Each score streak level additionally grants you 2% damage healing and move speed. Now, this is not exactly unheard of. Putting a scoring system onto things is going to make things more interesting. You know, giving you some extra challenge for something that you think was boring or just mundane and trivial. Now you have a scoring system. Now, when you were running from one pack to the next in Torghast or trying to kill a bunch of mobs in Torghast, almost like half AFK, watching some video on your second monitor, preferably my video on your second monitor, now you have a scoring system. Now you can pay a little bit more attention and you can get some more satisfaction from pulling off some big scores or something, which is completely normal and expected in a video game. It happened multiple times in multiple games. I don't see why it wouldn't make it more entertaining for Torghast. Now, if you have already heard of this, then you are probably aware of some of the complaints that people are already throwing out. Meaning, of course, people becoming elitists or people gating others out because of a scoring system, because there's going to be a ladder, a ranking, and therefore people can see who is doing what in Torghast and whatnot. Well, you are forgetting that Torghast is still a completely soluble activity. There is nothing that's going to hurt you <laughs> if a scoring system is going to come out because you can just do it on your own. Whenever you want, chilling, completely ignoring the score. So I don't really see the, the problem of this system being implemented. However it's going to be, since we don't know exactly how it's going to be, but, but I do think, in general, this system is just there to make it a little bit more interesting and more entertaining to try to get some high score for pulling off some nice plays in Torghast, especially now that we're going to have to talk about the second point, loosely related to Torghast, which is the Solash upgrade for your legendaries. This is very important because in the data mining being done for 9.1, there is no extra Solash cost for rank 5 and rank 6 of your legendary. So right now, your cap, your legendary cap, is at 235 item level, which is just a couple of item levels higher than the highest piece you can obtain, which is 233 from Elite PvP gear or from Mythic Stone Legion Generals and Mythic Denatrius. In 9.1, rank 5 will be 250 item level and rank 6 will be 260 item level, which is still just one item level higher of the possible highest item level you will be able to get, 259 from the last two bosses in Mythic Sanctum of Domination. And the interesting thing is, of course, that the Soul Ash being data mined did not change. The current cost that you can craft a rank 4 legendary right now in live is 5,150 Soul Ash. The rank 6 legendary, the new high rank you will be able to craft in 9.1, is still 5,150 Soul Ash. Which brings us back to the original point. Torghast, as an activity, is losing a lot of importance in 9.1. Because if up to now you had to do Torghast every week to get Solash to craft your legendaries and upgrade them, in 9.1 you won't need more Solash. You won't have the similar system that we've had before with things like Titan Residium, for example, which gets scaled down. So in the first tier of Titan Residium you have to spend 6,000 and then you have to spend 30,000 because you have to earn much more now. There's nothing like that. There doesn't seem to be anything of the sort. Right now, for example, you had enough Solash to craft something like at least four different rank four legendaries. If this patch is going to take two months to go into live, you're going to have enough time to craft another three 
rank four legendaries. So by the time 9.1 comes out, you're going to have five, six, even seven rank four legendaries, which means you won't really need Solash from Torghast anymore, which is why it makes, you know, it makes sense if Blizzard was planning on giving you some scoring system for Torghast to make it more appealing, to make it more entertaining, because you don't really have a reason to do it every week anymore. And Blizzard thinks, clearly, that the scoring system is going to be what is going to give you some more incentive in pushing Torghast, especially because, yes, maybe you might not need Solash anymore, but there are still data mined pets and mounts that are going to drop from Torghast, so there is still going to be at least some lure for you to go into Torghast. Now, back to the legendary part. Yes, apparently it's not going to need any more extra Solash. What it's going to need is a couple of new items, the Progenian Fragment and the Vestige of Origins. The Progenian Fragment so far, it's just a daily quest reward from Corthia. So you just get randomly sometimes a world quest which is going to award you with one Progenian Fragment. This fragment is what you use to craft the Vestige of Origins. No, don't worry, at least so far in the PTR, the crafting materials for the Vestige of Origins are very cheap. It's not going to be some 150,000 gold whenever you want to craft one of these or something like that. It's, it is pretty mild when it comes to the price of the materials. And the Progenium Fragment, you get it yourself. It's not some super special thing that only crafters are going to get and they're going to mark it up on, on the auction house for super high prices either. And the Vestige of Origins item is pretty self-explanatory. Increase the item level of the attached legendary base armor piece. This is obviously hinting at the slot in the Rune Carver crafting UI where you used to put your base white armor piece to upgrade your legendary item level. You add your older 210 item level legendary, you would put in the 235 one, spend Solash and upgrade it. In 9.1, you will put in your 235 item level legendary and instead of an extra 250 item level white piece, to upgrade your legendary, you will have to put in the Vestige of Origins. I mentioned Torghast becoming outdated because so far the Progenian Fragment is just from dailies. The Vestige of Origins doesn't require any other materials that might drop from Torghast in any way. So at least from the first round, the first wave of data mining, nothing really comes from Torghast anymore that requires you to upgrade your legendaries. So as long as you have the rank 4 legendary that you need, the multi multiple ones if you want to, you won't really need to get into Torghast anymore. I don't want to jinx it, but we don't exactly know where the Vestige of Origins is dropping from, the recipe, so maybe it's going to be some sort of grinding in Torghast required for you to get the Vestige of Origin patterns or something like that. Maybe Blizzard is planning to add or to modify the crafting recipe of the Vestige of Origins, requiring some other materials dropping from Torghast, but it doesn't look like they are heading this way. Because of the scoring system of Torghast, it looks like they are making it a more completely alternative game activity, game mode, without any sort of main character power attachment, except for the catch-up mechanism. You still want Solash if you want to change your legendary. Maybe in 9.1, some of your legendaries are going to get buffed massively. Legendaries which you have completely ignored, in 9.0 because they were terrible, so then you will have to craft them again, and you will need the Soul Ash. That's the only reason for you to keep going into Torghast, to, to make sure you have some spare Soul Ash to Instacraft a rank 4 legendary if you need it. But beyond this uh, emergency plan for your Soul Ash, it does look like Torghast is going to lose a lot of priority when it comes to your list of things to do every day, in this case every week, for Torghast Wings. Now, the last point is more of a clarification, which is going to be the mounting up in Corthia and the Mo and a few other adjustments. So we already know from a few days ago that the items from Venari were going to become account-wide if you had the reputation on another character. If you had already appreciative with your main, all of your alts could buy stuff from Venari as if they were appreciative themselves. The other addition in 9.1 is when you're going to gain the true Mo Walker buff. This is a buff that you gain literally something like 30 minutes inside the patch. You will get the starting quest chain for entering into Cortia. You will do a few quests in the Mo, and then you will be sent into Cortia. And right as you enter Cortia, the first thing you do is basically 
meet this new faction, meet the Death's Advance, and one of the NPCs there is going to give you the true Mo Walker buff. Yes, the more important part of this buff is that your mounts can now hear your call in the Mo, so you can mount in there. And on this note, a little bit off topic, but someone raised a very interesting point. If before your mounts were not hearing your call in the Mo, because they were very scared, because the power of the Jailer was very powerful, what about the mechanical mounts? What about the robots with no thought, with no mind, with no brain that can't be scared? Why weren't they hearing my call? Interesting question, but however, the more important part is that outside of being able to mount up, when you gain this buff, you are also going to freely enter the Beast Warrens and Perdition Hold when you gain this buff. This is basically going to cut the part where you required reputation with Venari to be able to enter those places, because as I mentioned, yes, your reputation is account-wide with Venari, but just for the vendor. So a fresh level 60 who goes to Venari, who has a main character who is appreciative, is just going to have the vendor enabled. He's not going to get all of the quests from Venari. He's not going to get all of the places in the mall unlocked just because the main character is appreciative. That new fresh 60 will have to continue the story with Venari, reputation rank by reputation rank, until all of it is unlocked. With this buff, you're going to basically be able to enter those places, Beast Warrens and Perdition Hold, without doing the whole rep grind. Now, this was almost logical when you look at how you get into Cortia. You literally get into Cortia by walking past the Beast Warrens. So it would have been pretty awkward to get people to traverse from the Mo and Cortia every time, even though they were technically not allowed to enter the Beast Warrens. So I guess this is just to make it a little bit more clear for people that the path between the Mo and Cortia is now clear for everyone. All you have to do is just half an hour, you know, half a dozen quests to get into Cortia and then you're fine. And with this, we have gone through all of the little bits and pieces of these scattered bit of news for 9.1 that Blizzard has in store. Some of those, yes, will require some extra clarification, starting from the scoring system from Torghast, and then, more importantly, the crafting system for your legendaries. As you know, players are way more touchy when it comes to player power, when it comes to power gains. So we'll have to wait. Our Blizzard plans to expand on that system. For now, we can stop here. Thank you guys for watching. I suggest you subscribe to this channel, although if you haven't already, why would you want to now? Honestly, anyways, see you guys soon, probably tomorrow. And in the meantime, no, I don't give a shit about a pirate dragon, okay? That's cringe.